Seven Deadly Innocent Frauds of Economic Policy by Warren Mosler The Role of Government Securities It is clear that government securities are not needed to fund expenditures, as all spending is but the process of crediting a private bank account at the Fed. Nor does the selling of government securities remove wealth, as someone buying them takes funds from his bank account which is a U.S. financial asset, to pay for them, and receives a government security, which is also a U.S. financial asset. Your net wealth is the same whether you have $1 million in a bank account or a $1 million treasury security. In fact, a treasury security is functionally nothing more than a time deposit at the Fed. Nearly 20 years ago, Soft currency economics was written to reveal that government securities function to support interest rates and not to fund expenditures as generally perceived. It goes through the debits and credits of reserve accounting in detail, including an explanation of how government, when the Fed and Treasury are con considered together, is best thought of as spending first and then offering securities for sale. Government spending adds funds to member bank reserve accounts. If government securities are not offered for sale, it's not that government checks would bounce, but that interest rates would remain at the interest rate paid on those reserve balances. In the real world, we know this must be true. Look at how Turkey functioned for over a decade. Quadrillions of liras of deficit spending interest rate targets often at 100%, inflation nearly the same, continuous currency depreciation, and no confidence whatsoever. Yet, government finance in lira was never an issue. Government lira checks never bounced. If they had been relying on borrowing from the markets to sustain, to sustain spending, as the mainstream presumed they did, they would have been shut down long ago. Same with Japan. Over 200% total government debt to GDP. 7% annual deficits. Downgraded below Botswana. And yet, government yen checks never bounced. And three-month government securities fund and three-month government securities fund near 0%. Again, clearly funding is not the imperative. The U.S. is often labeled the world's largest debtor. But what does it actually owe? For example, assume the U.S. government bought a foreign car for $50,000. The government has the car, and a non-resident has a U.S. dollar bank account with $50,000 in it, mirroring the $50,000 his bank has in its account at the Fed that it received for the sale of the car. The non-resident now decides that instead of the non-interest-bearing demand deposit, he'd rather have a $50,000 treasury security, which he buys from the government. Bottom line, the U.S. government gets the car, and the non-resident holds the government security. Now what exactly does the U.S. government owe? When the $50,000 security matures, all the government has promised is to replace the security held at the Fed with a $50,000 plus interest credit to a member bank reserve account at the Fed. One financial asset is exchanged for another. The Fed exchanges an interest-bearing financial asset, the security, with a non-interest-bearing asset. That is the entire obligation of the U.S. government regarding its securities. That's why debt outstanding in a government's currency of issue is never a solvency issue.